Hi again then guys, and so it's been a little while, about a couple of weeks now, since we last reviewed a specific car in the world of Gran Turismo 2, and we are returning once again in the GT sphere of things, your Vectors, Venturis, or in this case, a unicorn car, if you will, from Gran Turismo 2, the Celine SR, based of course on the Ford Mustang, and it's in the Ford dealership under the special cars section. And this is a vehicle which always stood out to me as a kid. I don't recall using it a huge amount, but I like the way it looked. It certainly looked the part. And even though at the time I didn't realise it was a Mustang, I would have probably liked it a little bit less if I had, it is certainly an impressive looking car. A million credits, over 600 horsepower, huge rear wing, plus it was so different to me as a kid. I didn't really know who Celine was. And I actually used to call this car the Sir Widebody. I didn't know that it was called the SR Widebody, although Widebody technically isn't even part of the name, it's just a fact about the car. Now, as far as sheer numbers, we're not told what the engine size on this model is, but you can assume it's probably similar to the Mustang that it's based on. As I mentioned just now, you've got over 600 horsepower, 640 to be exact, 545 pound-feet of torque, and the weight is pretty good, it's not amazing, but it's pretty good, it weighs 1180, and you're looking at 542 horsepower per tonne. And of course, as I alluded to just now, it costs a cool 1 million credits. So with that kind of price, a similar kind of price to a lot of really good race cars from Japan or various other countries, the car's kind of got a lot to live up to, not just because it's a race car, so of course it's got to be good, because plenty of other race cars already are, but it's a pretty expensive one. So what is the Celine SR actually like? Because as far as Celines go, they're very few and far between in the world of Gran Turismo, and in fact, after this car, we would have a little bit of a quiet period from Celine models until Gran Turismo 4, when we have the Celine that we had on GT4, 5 and 6, which is of course their most iconic supercar, and I would say one of America's best supercars, the Celine S7. This one is much more of a unicorn, it's much rarer, much more obscure as far as the gaming world goes. You don't see the Celine SR on that many games, although funnily enough it is available on Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition, or the remix, I can't recall which one, so that's kind of a random game for it to show up on, but that is of course the road version. This one is the full-on race car. So how does it perform? Well, the handling is fairly slippery, and of course it's dependent on downforce, tyres, tuning, the diff in particular makes a massive difference to a car like this, but in general it has the kind of handling which you would typically expect from something like, say an 80s or late 70s muscle car, or racing muscle car based vehicle. It has a very Cobra-esque, tail-happy feel to it, but of course with more downforce and more grip than a Cobra would have. And the kind of issue that that provides you with is that this car kind of switches on a dime. It has really good handling up to a certain point where the downforce is really in full swing, but then suddenly it can flick its tail out and just randomly lose grip when you're not expecting it, and you can just do a full 180 and end up stopped dead in the middle of the road. And of course you don't want that to happen in the middle of a race for obvious reasons. So you do need to be careful with this car. And overall the tuning requires a bit more time than many others. There are many race cars and many road cars on many racing games that you can basically just buy and if not drive straight away, just make a few minor changes to personalize it for your driving style and you'll be pretty much ready to go. Then there are others which require more time, more finesse, more fine tuning, more testing lap after lap to iron out the kinks. And funnily enough, that's kind of a running theme with the Celine models of Gran Turismo because not just with this car, but with the S7 as well, you also have to do that. The Celine S7 is an absolute monster in a straight line on all of the Gran Turismo games that feature it, but the handling can be tricky. It's a car which loves to go fast, but in the lower speed corners, it can struggle. And in that way, it's very similar to this one. Very similar, in fact. Although it's a totally different type of car, it has a very similar feel. Excellent at higher speed corners, due to the downforce and the grip and the turn-in that a race car has, but at the same time in the low speed corners where the downforce isn't in full effect, because you're not going fast enough, put simply, you do need to be careful of that snap oversteer that can sometimes happen. 
It's definitely not as slippery as something like a Lotus Elise GT1, for instance, but it is more slippery than many fan-favorite race cars. But overall, that's it for this particular unicorn review from Gran Turismo 2. Certainly a car which I would love to see come back, but I would say has a pretty narrow chance of doing so. But that's it for this pick overall. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.